I guess we'll start with your Jonathan Hale. Your yes, hi, um, hi Chris. <laughs> hey, you're from uh, Construct Arcade and Vite Rabbit, and you're based in Konstanz, Germany. Exactly. Yeah, that's in like in native speak we say Konstanz. Konstanz. It's uh, very in the very south of Germany. Cool. So basically, at the border to Switzerland. Yeah. Awesome. So. To get a background on on you, how did you first get into programming and how did you get into 3D graphics generally? So programming was interesting because back like, I don't know, like 10 years ago, I think, or soon to be 11 years, um, I, I was doing this like electronic music kind of course. And one of the guys there actually knew how to do code. And uh, he recommended this book, which was about C++. Now, somehow I got into it, and I like did weird stuff like a Latin vocabulary training application, which was basically still half written in English, so it never actually compiled or like actually worked. But it, for some reason, kept fascinating me. And I just stuck to it, and to this day, like uh, it's the thing I love doing most. Um, graphics programming, I guess, because of games programming. For some reason, obviously, there is a fascination with big, with like being able to make your own games and playing games as well. So making those would be like really, really fun. I thought, and uh, I got a book which was by Leonard Steinke. It's a German book, so I don't know if that helps a lot, but it's called Spieleprogrammierung, like games programming, obviously. And um, it was well written, and it kept me going. Like started out with like 2D graphics and that was like super fun to me. And it's ever been a passion since then. Um, I guess 3D graphics, once Minecraft came out, that was all obviously a cool thing again. And I wanted to be able to replicate that in C++ and like just like play around with it, never really thinking of making something serious. But uh, that got me into 3D programming. And really like, all of the 3D programming knowledge that I have mostly came from co open source contributions to the Magnum engine. So Vladimir there, who is the main contributor to that engine, or like the one who started that project, uh, he has a crazy expertise in C++. And uh, I started out with, with contributing um, Oculus Rift SDK support for it. So back in the DK1 days, you still had to like write your own shaders. But um, once that slowly moved into like actually this like server-based rendering part, where they provided you a proper SDK and you didn't have to write your shaders, like your distortion shaders yourself anymore, I thought it would be a cool thing to have Magnum work with Oculus, just like out of the box, more or less, like with minimal code. And uh, so I started this like four month project of a pull request on GitHub that uh, would then be the integration of the Oculus Rift. And I got like huge amounts of feedback. And it's like probably the thing that I learned most when uh, with programming. So like I just gave me a huge boost in programming skill. And uh, that's like, I can re recommend that to everybody who is getting into programming or doing something like that. Find a neat open source project that interests you, maybe maybe Exocit or something, <laughs> and uh, just like contribute because the people there have a lot of experience, and usually they are very very helpful. They want to help you and they want to get your code up to up to speed, like uh, to a level where they can accept it into the repository, and. Usually, you get like valuable feedback, and especially you can ask, actually ask people of, uh, about why those changes are required and why you need to do it this way. And um, that's very, very interesting for me. That was like the best thing I ever did. You mentioned the. Program. So, Sorry. with the Magnum engine, you're actually the second uh, biggest contributor to the project. Oh, you did, you did do a lot of research. <laughs> yeah, I, I noticed that. So you're obviously, uh, you know, a big part of that engine. Um, yeah, I guess so. Because uh, since I learned so much from that first pull request, I just kept like doing pull requests every now and then. Because while usually if uh, 
with Magnum, it's like it's like a Zen garden, right? They have like every function documented and everything is tested super well. And um, working in that way is um, very cumbersome or takes way longer than if you just hack down something. But it's a very robust way of coding, right? You have something that will basically stand the test of time and you can build your projects upon it and your projects won't crumble. So you have like a base without technical debt. And that is like a very, very nice feeling. And again, with every pull request, I learn new things. For example, now I'm doing like an script application base, which is more or less like an uh, application base for Magnum that uh, handles like opening a window and so on, but for mscripten, which is a compiler that compiles C++ into WebAssembly and then allows you to make like WebAssembly based games with Magnum, for example, that are like really, really small in comparison to the SDL2 application base that they currently use, but that's like getting into very technical details. So with um, Magnum, you're, if, and you could correct me if I'm wrong here, you're actually creating an engine for Construct Arcade, um, or you, you've you've done it and you're in the process of using uh, the engine, is that? So Magnum is just generally a open source graphics engine, open source C++ graphics engine. Uh, that is not necessarily focused on WebVR or WebXR or WebAssembly even. It, works on desktop just as fine on Android and iOS. So it's like really, really cr cross platform. Um, we use it for a couple of games, for example, VR Torum that we have on Construct Arcade and WebVR Pong are both based on Magnum. Um, but VR Torum, for example, also has like a more bigger framework wrapped around it because Magnum is more meant like a middleware for graphics and rendering. It abstracts all the OpenGL stuff a bit, and you have like structures like a mesh or a texture, um, whereas on OpenGL, you have like vertex attributes and all of that kind of stuff, right? But um, like Magnum is like a very, very low level thing in comparison to, for example, Unity or Honor Engine. You don't have an editor or anything like that. It uh, more or less works like an abstraction for all the different OpenGL versions, and in the future, we'll even have Vulkan support and so on. But it's like very, very low level, and it acts more like a middleware rather than an actual engine. OK. So there's Construct Arcade, but there's also v Vite Rabbit, which was before Construct Arcade. What is Vite Rabbit, and how is that? Uh, how did that play into the creation of Construct Arcade? So Vite Rabbit is a very interesting dynamic because back in the DK1 days, I just like gathered with, with a couple of friends and we had this idea like, look at this Kickstarter. This is amazing. This, this looks so cool. Let's make something with it. So we, had, we gathered a couple of friends. Like, I don't know, we were, I think, five people at the beginning. And then we uh, just started developing stuff. And then other friends saw what we were doing and we were like, and they were like, hey, cool, I want to join this. Or we asked people that we knew and then like people left. And it was like this weird, like hobbyist team that with people who were just like passionately making VR games or like VR tech demo -y stuff. And um, eventually, like because of my interest in entrepreneurship and just wanting to have my own business and wanting to do this full time and as a job. Then two of us last August actually founded a company out of this hobby based team because um, like we are eight people now, but six of us uh, have their like computer science or even medical studies alongside Vite Rabbit and don't have the time for a full time project like this. But Florian and I, like my my business part of Florian, and I founded Vite Rabbit as an actual company here in Germany uh, to build construct arcade. So what Vite Rabbit is Vite Rabbit does is we do contract work to finance our passion projects, and our first passion project is construct arcade. So construct arcade is a um, a browser games portal. Like if you know, uh, I don't know what mini clip I think. Is that German? I'm not sure. About yeah, that. Mini, Mini Clip is a good uh, good example for that. 
Exactly. So Miniclip is like a browser games portal for HTML5 and probably back in the days Flash games or something. And we're trying to do more or less the same thing, but for virtual reality only. And that basically emerged from a need. Like I saw what WebVR was kind of heading, and I was like, okay, there's like a super medium directory or WebVR directory, and uh, the Google experiments and the Mozilla VR stuff. Uh, but all of those were like mixed. They were like so many different experiences. Some were 360 videos or images, and some were like interactive musical experiences, and some were actually games. And I was mainly interested in the games. Like the other stuff was cool, but I, w I really tried to filter out the games from there. And I was just like every second thing I clicked on wasn't actually a game. So I was like, um, I need a place where there are only games. I want something like Miniclip or something like these other VR and uh, these other browser games portals that uh, where you can just like play one little game and then go to the next. Also, we at Vibe Rabbit always had this problem that we were only able to make rather small games and weren't able to get those onto Steam or Oculus or something like that. So I felt like there was a need for like be, being able to show people like a small kind of demo thing, like maybe a small game, but nothing that people would actually spend time downloading and then installing and then playing. So Constructor Arcade for me enables small developers to like put out these rather smaller games, which people then, because of the low friction, are just able to click on play without having ever to download or install anything. And um, I think, especially with like the Oculus Quest coming out and having this like very strict curation in the store, it feels like it would be great to still be able to be a small games developer and have a place where like your game can live, even though like it will never make it onto the Oculus Quest store because it's just too small or the visual quality is not quite up to like AAA quality or whatever they expect your game to be. Right. So yeah. So with WebXR generally, you're founding Construct Arcade on top of WebXR and um, there are people who believe that web isn't a good platform for you, for VR, but you've recently done some work optimizing a game that traditionally would be, um, uh, you know, a little bit too large for, for web VR, but you were able to optimize it and get it working um, more generally. So if you could, what was your experience with optimizing your recent experience? Um, so with like Florian basically made most of this game, the code and the assets, and he just started working. He, he's less of the technical guy. He's more like the game developer kind of type. So he's, um, I'm, I'm always like uh, looking at what he does and he's like, no, you need to do it like this because it's just not performant enough. Right. And VR really lives from a, a very highly performant, like graphics rendering stuff, because otherwise your immer immersion breaks if it like um, judges all the time. So um, he started out making the game and he had like many, many tiny objects. And uh, that's just really, really bad for the graphics card because you, for every object, you need to send the graphics card a message more or less that uh, it, it's supposed to draw these vertices now. Um, but with like the, the communication of the CPU with the GPU is a bottleneck in most applications, especially on the web especially on mobile even, where since you are on the web, mobile headsets can actually view your experience, right? So you need to optimize for the lowest common denominator or the lowest like target device. And in this case, mobile will have problems with draw calls. And all of the many, many tiny objects really choke the performance of the mobile GPUs. And um, what we did then was just like merge all those small objects into one big mesh, which allowed the CPU to tell the GPU once, okay, draw this huge big thing. And since it didn't move, you could draw exactly the same mesh every frame again and again. And that saved most of the performance actually. Um, additionally, with JavaScript and uh, things, you have a lot of like little code tweaks you can do. Um, we thought about like uh, 
no, we actually did a lot of like optimization on the meshes itself. Like in one of the first versions, there were like clouds in the very, very back of the game. You only like see them if you lean a bit and <laughs> they're like very far off. And originally those had like a thousand vertices or something. So we spend a lot of time looking at uh, where they're, where meshes just like have huge detail uh, that they don't really need because, for example, they are like way too far away. So that's things we did. Awesome. You mentioned Oculus and uh, the recent controversy around the Quest store and their high barrier to entry. For Construct Arcade, for people who want to submit games to the Construct Arcade, mm -hmm. what uh, what kind of guidelines do you have and what are the requirements for submission? So generally we want the game to actually be a game, right? So if it plays, if it has a start and the end condition or something like that, um, that is usually mostly good enough. You should be fair to the user as in don't, don't try to shake his head around or something like that. So we're looking for a little bit of like immersion quality there. Um, and obviously the performance should be all right. But uh, usually, if you don't try to go overboard with the visuals, then that's going to be pretty simple to do. Uh, other than that, like the barrier of entry is low, but not in sense of quality. But um, I guess like it shouldn't be too hard to get on to Construct Arcade if you have a game that plays, right? You've done some experiments with a web with a Unity export to WebVR for oh, yeah, yeah. Construct Arcade. For people who aren't familiar with building for VR and specifically mm -hmm. WebVR, what do you recommend on how they get into start developing for it? Okay, so Unity is very, very popular, especially with VR content. So it's Unreal Engine, but Unreal Engine currently doesn't even have a way to like export for WebVR. I actually worked on that for a bit and tried to get that implemented, but uh, to this date, no full success. Um, Unity, though, has a plugin by Mozilla that allows uh, the HTML5 export to also support that VR. Um, currently, I cannot really recommend Unity as a way to do that VR content because it has a lot of code and it's optimized for running on many platforms, but not HTML in general, because on the web, you obviously have the constraint of not wanting to download huge games, right? So if you open a web page, you want the game to be at max like 10 megabytes or something. And with Unity, like the smallest you can get with like an empty project is already, I don't know, I think over that. So um, I recommend using, if you're starting out programming in general, probably a frame because that is a very popular fra framework at the moment. And it has a lot of resources because of that. So a lot of people are also writing custom components. So the, you will probably not have to write too much custom code to get your game working. Also, our Construct Arcade uh, recently released game on Construct Arcade Versa Express is also based in, on A-Frame and will be releasing a couple of blog posts to also um, make people understand how they can optimize using A-Frame. Um, and yeah, I guess A-Frame because it's it has the most resources and a very great community on Slack, for example, is the way to go at the moment. So I notice while while looking um, looking uh, up things that you're you created Lego parkour videos at one point. Oh, wow. Is, That's <laughs> is, is that a, um, was that a 3D graphics? Uh, did that help you learn more about 3D graphics with setting up scenes and doing animations like that? Yeah, 100%. Back in the days, I was very interested in Blender, especially like that was actually before my coding times. And I think that helped me understand a lot of like the 3D um, coordinate system stuff and materials and things like that, or generally how animation works also helped me make my own assets for my first games or um, help people export their assets properly for 
a code that I wrote. So I think definitely that played a big role. And Blender, although like if you open it first, is very scary because there's a lot of buttons. It's again an application with loads of tutorials and like loads of resources that help you getting started. If you just type in Blender getting started, you'll find like so many video series on how to get started with like 3D modeling and animation. And Blender is completely free as opposed to like Maya or Max or Houdini or stuff like that. So that is also 100% something that I can recommend. And everything you do in Blender, you can later then use in A-Frame, for example, or in Magnum or in uh, Unity and Unreal Engine if, you, uh, if you're not targeting but VR, I guess. So yeah. <laughs> Interesting that you found that. <laughs> that it throws me way back. <laughs> yeah. So, th thanks for uh, taking the time to to talk today. I have a, one last question, which is more future facing, um, which is what do you want for the future of Construct Arcade, and also what do you think should be done for WebXR generally to ensure a positive future for the ecosystem. Okay, so I'll tackle the last question first. Okay. Um, it's like WebXR at the moment has one big problem that it's not a standard yet, right? So it's constantly changing and uh, most browsers have a hard time keeping up with that development. So it may be that the application you wrote yesterday breaks tomorrow because Chrome updates or like ends their trials, um, origin trials, whatever it's called. Um, and then like, that's kind of sad because people can't play your game anymore and you have to spend time updating it again. At Constructor Arcade, we try to like insert a little layer that emulates old web VR and web XR version, API versions that different browsers once implemented to ensure that um, the older games still work but that's a lot of work also for us and it's like hard to keep up with all of that and we're only succeeding with that to a degree um but i think once the web xr spec has been fully um, standardized that's gonna be like a huge thing because this entry barrier of okay well what i'm doing is basically experimental right because the api is experimental um will will then dissolve and while if frameworks like A-Frame kind of abstract you away from all of these changes, it still like only works to some degree similar to the constructor Kate emulating layers, right? Um, where I see constructor Kate in the future, um, well, I already said we're trying to head in the direction of like um, a VR browser games portal. So of course we're trying to focus the VR browser games industry somewhat on our page. So not only try to help developers make VR browser games and provide resources in that direction, provide help with optimizing games and tackling all the technical difficulties that it may bring with it, um, but also like create communication with the player base of those games. We actually have a forum that still is not being used very frequently yet. But that's supposed to be like a channel for the developers and the players of those games to talk about those games. And often there's like um, on these Flash Games websites and on the browser games portals, you often had people who were like crazy, going crazy about like one little game that just like had this little thing for them. And um, I, I kind of want VR developers or VR games developers to find their players on our platform and like have the play um, the player base, right? To make games like those small little gems and um, just like findable or give them the attention that they deserve. Um, exactly, yeah. And that is kind of what we aim for at the moment. We're trying to uh, sometime in the future have like a VR mode for Construct Arcade. So basically being able to just play one game after the other without ever having to take off the headset and going through the 2D page. Um, maybe we'll release an app on some day just to make it like more accessible. Um, 
by the way, I heard that ExoKit is able to um, make an app out of your web VR website. So that's a really, really cool thing. It may enable that in the future. Cool. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, we're trying to develop more services, as in we have leaderboards on Construct Arcade, for example, that you can implement. And we're looking to release an A-frame component for that soon to just like basically have uh, leaderboards for your game like with one click on our site. And then like you including a line of code, and maybe in the future multiplayer and um, avatars and fancy stuff like that, just to like enable you to make a bigger game without a lot of more effort, just to have a very um, great baseline baseline to start off of. Cool. Awesome. Well, thank you for sharing, Jonathan. Thanks for taking the time to talk. For people thank you who are. For Thank you for inviting me to this interview, and thank you for giving me a chance to talk about Construct Arcade. Definitely. And thank you for re researching, because like that was actually pretty, very cool, and especially the throwback to the Lego Parkour videos. <laughs> <laughs> for people who want to check out more about Construct Arcade, where can they find more information? Well, obviously, the website, constructarca.de. That is kind of like a trick we played to try to put in the dot into the Construct Arcade. Um, I don't know if that was the best decision because it's really hard to explain to people, but constructarcade.com is also a place you can go. Uh, if you want, follow us on Twitter. That would be awesome. And uh, Instagram and Facebook, we're also. So um, if you have a game, please send it over. We're happy to have it on our site. Awesome. Thanks. Thanks, Jonathan. Thank you, Chris.